Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? I'm usually pretty far from the microphone. It's a function of being very tall. Okay. Well, let me let me start first by thanking my dear friend Hassan for inviting me to participate here today. The Union of Arab Banks is an organization that I've had the pleasure of working with for the past decade plus on these issues. It's always a pleasure to come back and participate with the Union of Arab Banks. Thanking my good friend Otto and Mamina Fadif for their excellent work in the region. I was fortunate to be around at the foundation of Mamina Fadif and I've been thrilled to see the success of its work over the past decade. I also want to thank Dr. Ahmad Zafan, thank you so much for the kind introduction. It's not often when you leave government that you can come back and continue to participate in these sorts of conferences in the way that the region has always welcomed. So I, I'm very grateful for that. His Excellency Dr. Zian Faris, it's a pleasure to be here, thank you. And Mr. Shahada from the Association of Banks in Jordan, thank you for your remarks. So as we look at the challenges that we are now facing in the region on terrorism finance, we have a foundation that we have built over the past 15 years working together. That foundation is important to recall at the beginning of this conference because we're going to need it. We're going to need it to strengthen and improve our counterterrorism financing efforts. I remember when I first came out to the region, when I joined the Treasury Department, like so many in compliance, after the terrorism attacks September 11, 2001. <clears throat> and it was my introduction to you all, to the region, and to the issues of terrorism finance. And the work that we have done together since then is astounding. The creation of the Mina Fata, the implementation, <coughs> the adoption of the special recommendations to combat terrorism financing by the Financial Action Task Force, the criminalization of terrorism financing, the creation of targeted sanctions, not just as a name and shame tool, but as a tool of operational security. These are some of the steps that we have taken together over the past 15 years in partnership between the region and the global financial system between the private sector, the banking community, and government. How do we build on this foundation to address the challenges of today? What are the challenges specifically that we face today in combating terrorist finance? I want to outline what I think are three distinct forms of risk related to terrorism finance that shape our environment today. And they have to inform our counterterrorism financing efforts. The first form of risk that I want to outline is real terrorism financing risk and what is happening in the region. Hassan mentioned Daesh. Not a surprise to anyone who's been here or watching the newspapers over the past few years. An urgent threat not only to the physical security of the region, but to the economic stability of the region, to the integrity of our financial system here and abroad. The resiliency of Al Qaeda, which we have succeeded in working together to balkanize, to remove from Afghanistan, but that continues to endure throughout the region. The potential resurgence of the Taliban, 
and Afghanistan, despite over a decade of efforts to first neutralize and integrate that post-9-11 threat. The continued tyranny and terrorism of al-Shabaab, Boko Haram, and Africa. The regional instability and war in Syria and Yemen. These are developments <coughs> that heighten the importance of our counterterrorism financing efforts, perhaps more now than ever before. These real risks are also complemented by what we see as convergence. <coughs> convergence of terrorist organizations and criminal actors that in some ways make our jobs more challenging. Proceeds of drug trafficking, extortion, kidnapping for ransom, criminal sources of terrorism financing on the rise and creating challenges not just for our counterterrorism policies, but for our anti-money laundering policies. New or growing real risks that we see with virtual currencies, the rise of social media, and the advent of foreign fighters in the region have received considerable attention, but our results are questionable. And then the extremely difficult but familiar challenges that we have seen over the past 15 years or more about terrorist organizations with substantial territorial control and the exploitation of resources and people that happen when that control is manifest. These are the real risks that we see happening in the region that make our work so important. But they're not the only kind of risks that we see. In addition to these real risks, we see regulatory risks in the region. What is regulatory risk? If you're a banker or a regulator, you know what I'm talking about. Regulatory risk is the difference between real risk and compliance expectations. It has led to the de-risking phenomenon that has received quite a bit of attention, but is not very well understood. And it's owing fundamentally to a recognition of the importance of our mission in combating terrorism financing and all financial crime, whether corruption, money laundering, drug trafficking proceeds, or other sources of criminal activity. That increasing importance met with rising anxiety over how we execute that mission together with a common set of expectations and a balance over what is pragmatically workable in maintaining the efficiency and effectiveness of the financial system for legitimate financial services while shutting out those criminals and terrorists that seek to abuse it. That challenge has led to a real divergence in expectations between regulators and regulators often between the United States and other markets. We need to overcome that. That's a second form of risk that we're facing. A third form of risk is policy risk. What do I mean by policy risk? There are acute differences in the perception of terrorism financing and the definition of terrorist organizations and the requirements across countries that make it very difficult for banks to operate in this environment. Global enterprise-wide risk management. Who's heard of that great phrase? We spent a lot of time in the past 15 years developing the concept of global enterprise-wide risk management. It means that your organization as a bank, a financial institution, or a financial system should understand and manage risk coherently 
across the full organization or system. It makes sense until you run into the reality that different laws exist in different countries and these laws aren't always compatible. Mm -hmm. That the information you need to understand and manage risk is often not available. It's not available due to conflict of law, but also due 